Welcome into another edition of NFL Power Rankings. I'm Colleen Wolf, alongside three-time Pro Bowler and current vegan MJD. That's yes. right. That's uh-huh. right. And the man who's been writing these rankings and listening to you give him heat for seven years now, Elliot Harrison. What do we have in store today? What should we brace ourselves for? Colleen, I have zero Pro Bowls, okay? But I've yep. got a team that's moving 10 spots up. i got a team that dropped more than 10 spots and a team in the top 10 that nobody's talking about. And they haven't talked about them all offseason, and we are going to talk about them. We're going to change that right now. Here we look at the top 10, and look, the AFC West is represented well in your top 10, but that first number one spot, the Chiefs, I think you've been listening to MJD on this. I I might have. Hey, I I give him a lot of credit. He called the week one upset in New England. Uh, Kansas City watched every play of the second half of this game. Their front seven would not let up. They got the big interception from Chris Jones. The defense is the biggest reason why they're number one. Bob Sutton, he's looking good right now. Well, you know what? For me, the Chiefs are doing what they're supposed to do. You lose Eric Berry, you replace him, but that secondary has still been able to cover, and they're getting pressure on the quarterback, Which and they're confu- and they're confusing. They're confusing quarterbacks. And let's let's remember the Eagles, Colleen, your team. Yep. They're a really good team. Yeah, they are. Number two, another really good team, another offense that can gash you in a couple different ways like the Chiefs are the Raiders. Yeah, and Colleen, I think this is deserved. Uh, yeah, well, of course, I did the list. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to argue yours. with myself. But what do we always say? If you're at home against a weaker team, you need to handle them. Well, guess what? The Raiders handled them by three scores. We're playing backups in the second half. Jalen Richard had a great game for the Raiders, and they also had an impressive road win in week one. I think this is deserved. The Raiders' defense is not getting enough credit. They go to Tennessee. They shut down their running game. They do a really good job of keeping the offense in the game in the first half against the Jets. Then the offense takes off in the second half. The Raiders are for real. So you're okay with this is the team. Yeah, right now. Okay. Somewhere right now, Marshawn Lynch is whipping around his dreads. As he should be. There I like this top 10 look. right here. I think you should like it because yeah. you put it together. I know you don't like it. A Packers big drop down. Boy, a lot of injuries there. I know we're going to get to some of these other well, teams. Up. I'm looking at that number three spot. The Patriots, they're one and one, and they're ahead of five. Count them, five undefeated teams. For me, the Patriots should be seven. And the reason I say seven is... You, it's a. It's not what you did last year in the Super Bowl. It's what you did week one and week two. We add those together. You did what you're supposed to do against the Saints, but you didn't defend home. And I think losing at home to me is more of a loss than anything else. You have the Falcons, who went out and they played on the road in Chicago, a tough place to play, regardless of how bad the team is. The grass is a little bit different there, but then they come back yeah. home, open a new stadium, Elliot, and they handle business. The grass is different there. Come it on. is different you there. You were the one that was telling me the Falcons were going to handle I don't know the what Bears. you're talking about. There's no film of I, that. I, I think it Atlanta did what New England didn't do in week one. They took care of a team at home, but Atlanta didn't do in week one what New England did in week two, which was handle a weaker opponent on the road. New Orleans is a tough place to play. I'd say tougher than Chicago. And you know what? The Patriots did beat this team this year in February. Uh, Yep. Same calendar year. Oh, Colleen, don't you go there. Remember when the Chiefs hammered the Patriots in 2014? Who won the Super Bowl that year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know what, Elliot? Yeah. You have to stop. The Patriots did play well, but their defense is still suspect. I don't believe if you play, if they play together this week, if they played week three, I think the Falcons Week seven, it. we'll find out. Yeah, that's right. Intercepted, picked off of the 20, down the sideline. Juan Alexander does it again with a defensive gym. Here comes Buck pressure up the middle. Glennon's going to be, he fumbled the ball, fumbled the ball. Picked up by the Buccaneers at the 20, 35-yard line. Picked off the 40, outside the number, to the 30. Bobby McClay inside the five. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Robert McClay takes it to the house. Well, we all saw the Bucs in their first game of the season. They smoked the Bears. The Seahawks, they barely got past the 49ers. So why are the Seahawks in the top 10 right now? Okay, I dropped the Seahawks even though they won the game. And I just got a tweet from Johnny who said, hey, with that offensive line and offense, how can they be a top 10 team or even top 15? Find me 15 really good teams in the league right now. Once you start getting at the back end of the top 10 and into the teens, you could point out flaws in every one of these teams. And Seattle always slow starts and they always end up in the postseason and they usually win when they're there. Really worried about that offense though. I mean the offensive line and the offense as a whole MVD. You stay there Elliot. You stay there Colin. Let me take you to the board Uh so we can show you the difference. Uh, Here catch my chair for me. Don't let it hit nobody. (laughs) All right. Right now 
I'm looking at the rush offense for both teams. I got to give it to the Bucks. I don't see a running back here on the Seattle Seahawks. No, Doug Martin, much anything. No. It, was, it was Eddie Lacy first. Then now it's Chris Carson. We don't know who it is. Draw Pass Chris offense Carson. is real very simple. Mike Evans, Jameis Winston, Deshaun Jackson. Rush defense, this, this is where I have an issue. Okay. The Seahawks used to be known for rush defense, but last week they gave up 124 yards on 15 carries to Carlos Hyde. They gave up one Where the play. Bucks. They shut down that Chicago Bears rush, rush uh, offense for 20 yards with uh, Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard. Howard. Obviously, pass defense is here with the uh, Seattle Seahawks. I mean, Richard Sherman, those guys are going to do well. And I have to go with coaching. I'm going to go with Pete Carroll. Conclusion You're not is. Go with your guy? Yeah, it is my guy, but Pete Carroll won the Super Bowl. So I, I got to go with. Wow. I, 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 listen, this is not. This is not personal. This is just business. <laughs> but the Bucks, they're the team for me. Give me my chair back. Give me I my think chair. It's like there a scan contest, but I think A and C only there. Arguable. Are okay. you kidding me? Well, here's a here's a look at the rest of your uh, the 11 to 20 on the list. Almost the entire NFC East is represented in, right. in the mix here. But the Cowboys, now that they're here, they dropped six spots to number 12 after that brutal loss to Denver. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is deserved. I, I still think the Cowboys are a good team. Where are they in the rankings? They're 12. What is 12? It's a fringe wild card team. That's what I think they are. They were impressive in week one. Then you get them in a tough place to play, and they came out flat. They had no running game. Some people said uh, guys quit on the team, namely that one. Don't know if I'll go that far, but I will say this. One of the worst games of the Jason Garrett era. I, for me, it's more about the Broncos than it is the Cowboys. The Broncos defense Agreed. showed up. The Broncos offense that played well. That run defense that showed up. Everything showed up for the Broncos. They have something going. It's more about them than it is about the Cowboys right now. Yeah, the Cowboys... Uh... Rough, rough stuff for them. How about the Panthers? They're 2-0, and and it doesn't seem like they're a 2-0 team right now. Well, you know, when you're, when you're in the 16th spot or the 17th spot in the power rankings, that's kind of like we, we don't know what you are. Are you a 9-7, and 10-6? and six? Are you a 7-9 and nine team? The issue for the Panthers is not really what they've done on defense. They've been great, but it's their opponents. Buffalo and San Francisco, very offensively challenged football teams, and they lost Greg Olson. Yeah, for me, I, you have them right where I think they would be, too. Right in the middle of the pack. We don't know which way it's going to go. Right now, they're teetering. They don't know. Should we go bad or should we go good? So let's just wait and see it. You hit that one right on the head. Oh, right oh good so job. Good Congratulations. Got you got it yeah. right. First look here at teams 21 through 29. Mm. Th- two Cali teams on the list. Almost three, but the Chargers escaped that since they're number 20. Yeah, the Jags had some uh, tip passes hurt them. I actually moved the Rams up even they lost because so many teams look bad. Mm, well, that brings us to too high, too low. Who's being disrespected? Who deserves more love? MJD, I'm going to go to you on this first with the Ravens at number 11. You know what? They're too high. I think the Ravens really? are going to be a little bit lower. I, I just don't – they haven't played anyone. You played the Bengals. You beat them. At, I mean, that, but they're the Bengals. But you always tell but me then you play you, who's on your schedule. You do, mm. but they didn't beat – it wasn't a decisive win okay. for me. Uh, Andy Dalton's throwing picks, yes, and that's really good, their defense. But offensively, they don't look like they've done – they're well, running and, the ball, though, now. Yeah, yeah. I just, it just doesn't seem like – I just feel like they should be closer to the Panthers. I'm worried about the big injury, too. Maybe the best interior lineman in football, Marcia Yonda, but I love their defense so far. Okay, how about the Dolphins, number 15? You know what? I feel like they're too low. I feel like they had to deal with distraction after distraction after mm-hmm. distraction. Still to be able to go to uh, L.A. and to Costa Mesa and beat the Chargers. That, to me, shows you're talking about a team that's ready to go. Their offense looks really good. Defense looks like they're they're playing well. Uh, I think this is going to be a team that's going to ascend very quickly. I think those are fair points. I, I, I do. Yeah, and this was a playoff team from a year ago. I, I, I will say that I've only seen one week from them. With them in Tampa, I was pretty conservative because openers are always a little bit of a misleading uh, thing, and it was week two for those teams this year. So the Cardinals, they're at number 19, and that offense had no juice at all the first three quarters yeah, of the game. I love Bruce Aarons, and I love the way he coaches. And but, you hate the Cardinals. But they are too high. They mm. need to be down at the bottom. They they went into overtime with the 31st ranked team, 32nd last week, and they stay the same. Come on, Elliot, Don't be afraid. Bruce Aarons ain't going to get you. I think the biggest <laughs> – this is an important point. It's week three. This is where injuries really start to play a role. They lost uh, – the biggest injury so far is David Johnson, I think, mm. in the young season. They went on the road. They got a win. I didn't move them anywhere. And they, they got some big plays from their defense. Okay, so the Cardinals, they stood pat this week at number 19. But some teams are tripping and stumbling up and down. 
the rankings here. Let's go with the Broncos. They're up 10 spots. Yeah, well, MJD was all over me last week for, for not moving too high on these guys. This is a market correction because they proved it. Trevor yeah. Simeon proved it, and that pass rush was fantastic. It's the moxie of Trevor Simeon. That's what it is. Moxie. moxie. The moxie. Boys. The moxie of Eli Manning. We didn't really see that last night. They're down 11 spots to 24. Yeah, well, the thing here is, again, I was being conservative last week. I didn't drop them as far as you guys wanted me to, but Odell Beckham was back. I thought we would see a better performance. That offensive line and no running game is making Eli Manning look worse than he is. And when you don't have Janoris Jenkins on defense, you can't win that way. They look. They deserve the 11th Ben uh, spot McAdoo's drop. hair is what gets. It just confuses you me. Like he's got that old because school I don't comb like the and he slick. just takes it out. And then I, I think he's thinking too much because now you have Odell Beckham. Why is he active? You're not going to use him on every play. Don't just use him on third downs. You have to get him out there. He is your playmaker. He's the guy that brings the energy. Fix your hair, and then maybe Fix we'll think about hair. moving, moving well, you up. The Giants, uh, they better, I guess, fix a lot of things or else they're going to be here in the bottom three. Bottom three, here you can, uh, as you can see, we got the Bengals, the Colts, and the Jets here. Yeah, Ooh. you know, the Jets didn't look good. At least Jermaine Curse got involved, Matt Forte got involved. I think they're the worst team in the league right now. The Colts, Jacoby Brissett showed me a little bit. I mean, they're all bad. <laughs> oh, it's, not, it's not good at the bottom of the barrel there. A lot of talk about that 5-6 region with the Steelers and the Broncos. For more on why the Steelers are over the Broncos, it's time for Balance of Power. Is Vance Joseph really having the time of his life there? Uh, it seems like it. <laughs> Colleen, Elliot, listen. Let's just get right into it. Rush offense. I love Le'Veon Bell. You should. I love him to death. One of my young pups. But it's not just about the running back. It's about the supporting cast, the offensive line, the guys behind him. So I have to give it to the Broncos. Jamal Charles Sips and C.J. Anderson, they've been running the ball like crazy they've these last couple great. weeks. I mean, Pittsburgh did play a Minnesota front that is stacked. I get it. I get it. I get it. But these guys have done a great job running the ball. They said they want a new rush offense. They've gotten that. Pass offense, I want you to tap that. That's, yep. I mean, that's Big Ben, A.B., Leib Bell, Martavis Bryant, Jesse James. You Bryant throw, had a nice game. You throw them all in there. Now, when it comes to defense and you're talking about these two teams, they both go right here to the Denver Broncos. Obviously, this rush defense, we saw them uh, last fair. week against Ezekiel Elliott and the Cowboys. Eight I mean, carries, nine yards. Yeah, that doesn't work out well. And they demolished Something that O-line like up front. And then, obviously, the no-fly zone. That's Give easy. it to me one more time. A, a keep to leave. When you take a pick 103 yards to the house, you got to get some love here. Chris Harris, those guys are doing a great job. Now, when it comes to coaching, come on. I, hey, listen, I know both these coaches very well. I got a chance to sit down with them at the combine. You're and have a big man's Joseph fan. Oh, huge. Yep. Uh, but I got to go to the coach, touch that for me, that won the bowl. Mike Tallinn knows how to win the big game. They so do another me, one. I mean, it is what it is, but I think you got this wrong. I think it needs to be flipped a little bit. It looks like they I, should I, be fighting. I, I, I think the rush offense still goes to the Steelers. Oh, look at some marquee matchups we have coming up. Eagles at the – or Giants at the Eagles. We got the Falcons at the Lions. Good we have games. a lot of good games. Cowboys at the Cardinals. Um, which one do you think is going to have the biggest impact on next week's rankings? It's going to be Seahawks at Titans for me. I, I think Russell Wilson, they're going to the East Coast. You're playing the Titans. These guys have – this defense has to keep them in the game. Russell Wilson's offensive line has to figure it out. But that's the key right there. You see that guy told yep. that rock? Mm -hmm. Derrick Henry is coming into his own right now. I think it's going to be a change in the guard there in the backfield. If he can get going, it's going to be a long day for that Seahawks team. In fairness, I think MJD picked the right game here. Uh, Lions-Falcons would be one I'd look at, but I really like the Raiders at Redskins matchup. If the Redskins can't upset them, and I think the Redskins are a weaker team, obviously that's going to shake up the power rankings. Also, I want the Raiders to go out and prove it. You beat a weaker team at home, now go beat a weaker team on the road. And I also love the matchup. We always see this every four years. Super Bowl 18. Listen, yeah. I, I oh. saw the Redskins last week versus the Rams. They, they are who we thought they are. Yep. They're not, not that good. Yeah. They run the ball well. They do run the ball both, well. Both of those teams can run the ball well now, too. Yep. Okay, MJD, who's your power player for You week see the three? guy right there, Ezekiel Elliott. Last week I said Eli Manning has to have a good game in order to get the Giants back on. He doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. Now we go to Ezekiel Elliott. He has to get his running game going. If he's not active and he doesn't rush for 100 yards against the Cardinals on Monday night, it will be an issue. The Cowboys will have a real issue. I think this team relies on Dak and Zeke getting their running game going. They have to run the ball this week. I don't care how much the rules open up the passing game. When you get the running game going, it helps your quarterback. It helps your defense. It helps all of us. Zeke Elliott has a better game in Denver. That defense looks better, and Dak plays better. It's that simple. We're not used to seeing them just rely on the passing game and having right. teams throw guys at Dak. Welcome to Tony Romo's world. That's right.
Finally, we're putting 30 seconds on the clock for Elliot to give his closing arguments about the teams we didn't really get to today. So 30, yeah. go. Okay, I got it right here. The Browns are playing the Colts. I want to see more from Deshaun Kaiser. I can't wait to do it. All right, Chicago Bears look terrible. Maybe it's time for a quarterback change. New Orleans Saints, where's the defense that we saw in the preseason? Where's Where? Michael Where Thomas? Are you? Where's Michael Thomas? Great, great comment. Houston Texans, hey, I get it. It was against the Bengals, but Deshaun Watson, pretty good. First career start on the road. Get a win. Nice mobility. And then the big one here, the Detroit Lions. Now, I teased that there was a top 10 team Uh, that we hadn't talked about. The Lions, The Lions. Matt Stafford looked really good last night. Getting out of trouble, moving those legs. I do. That's it for Power Rankings.